Hello world. Today we're going to be checking out how to automate pulling historical Dogecoin prices and then using matplotlib to compare Dogecoin to Bitcoin. If you're not familiar with Dogecoin, uh, then it's a cryptocurrency based off of a meme. Yeah, that's real. So uh, recently Elon Musk tweeted out, uh, tweeted about it and it sent the prices soaring. Uh, since then, he said that it was primarily a joke and he's all about Bitcoin, but still. So we'll be automating uh, pulling those historical Dogecoin prices and just comparing it to Bitcoin. But first, welcome to the 125th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. This is the 11th video in my Python for Finance playlist. And uh, you can watch the previous video where I automate pulling the S&P 500, the Russell 2000, Bitcoin prices, and the yield curve and comparing it to the S&P 500 using matplotlib. So, uh, so we can take a look at that program now. So if you look in this data folder, uh, the last time I ran this was, uh, it looks like August 12th. So let's uh, move those folders here, okay? And now let's run this program. And what it's going to do is it's going to go to Quandle and it's going to pull the S&P 500, the Russell 2000, uh, should be pulling the yield curve, there we go. And then lastly, the historical Bitcoin prices. Now it gives me this. Let me minimize this. So now it gives me this chart right here. And you can see we are looking at the S&P 500 here against the Russell 2000. Then we switch to the yield curve. Notice how that switches to yield curve. The red is still the S&P 500. And this green is the yield curve. And then finally we get to Bitcoin. And as you can see, and with matplotlib, it comes with the inherent, oops, I forgot to get the chunk off, but uh, you can zoom in and out. So everything's gone up basically. Okay, so now if we go to the data folder, let's clear this, you'll see that we have all the files named exactly how we wanted. It pulled it from their downloads file into this folder. Okay, so now we already have the Bitcoin price. So um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to use Quandle for historical Dogecoin prices. So what I had to do was go to Crypto Compare. Let me make sure, okay. And I signed up for a free API key and uh, they limit to you 100,000 per month and I think 400,000 total calls for free. So just preparing for this video, I made 33 calls because I'm a self-taught programmer and uh, this is hard sometimes. So you can go to the calls right here and this is how you can click here um, how to use our, or no, I clicked here API documentation. You'll need this API key. And then I clicked on this historical data, daily pair. And then I replaced BTC here with Doji. And we'll just leave it at 10 for now. And then you copy and paste your API key here. And then you press execute call. When you execute that call, it gives you the response below here, which is super cool. And I wish more sites gave you a preview of it. And as you can tell, this is a uh, you know, most likely a dictionary and in JSON format. So you can kind of pre-game how you want your code. And so we'll be using this right here, the time. And this time is what's known as an epoch date and time. And I'll show you how to uh, convert that. And then we'll use this close price. So uh, cryptocurrencies don't close. There's not a stock market. They're just uh, on exchanges. And each exchange has a slightly different price. And so uh, I just wanted to use the close so we have some sort of um, apples to apples comparison. All right, so crypto compare, free API, 
and this is the get uh, method that we'll be using. So now I have um, automated that, and now let's run this program. Uh, let's make sure I call that first. Get Doji prices. All right. All right, let's run this. There you go. So when we go into the data folder, now there's a doji. And I forgot to put the date on there. And as you can see, we have two axes here. One is Bitcoin prices right here in the red. Um, I had to, it goes all the way up to 40,000. Now these are closes. So uh, if you track crypto, you know that it goes slightly higher. And we can use matplotlib's highlight tool. So uh, it went a little bit over 41. And Doji has been up to 0 0.06 before, but it didn't really close, right? It was just momentarily. So, and that's what it looks like. So uh, as you can see, uh, they kind of trail each other. Bitcoin has had more press. And then uh, around here is exactly where Elon Musk tweeted around December 20th and as you can see it has skyrocketed all right so let's go through the code real quick so we're going to import requests now I have my own keys file where I store my crypto compare API key um, but you can just copy and paste the string into your project we're gonna need time the video looks blurry on my end anyways uh, import CSV because we'll be saving it to an Excel file. Uh, we'll need the date from date time. Then we'll import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, pandas as PD. Um, warnings because, uh, well, I don't actually use these right here. This is if you were using a uh, driver. So you can skip these right here. Next is the uh, today, so I use this throughout, so I put it in caps, equals string date dot today. And that's how I change the change and read this date timestamp right here. Then I created a function called get doji prices. So we're going to use this URL here, which you get from here. So if you want to do something else differently, and I'll show you what I did differently, then you can just uh, modify either this limit, and you can do up to 2,000, and then you can change this to whatever symbol you want. Okay? So here you can see I put doji, and I put 1,000. And then you're going to do the uh, crypto, your API key. So what I did is I added the URL, I concatenated it. So response equals request.get this URL plus the API key. You can just copy and paste your API key here and then just put request.get URL. Then I'm going to put it in a dictionary using the JSON function. So my dictionary equals response.json. And then um, you can print this out just like this print my dictionary and you see that everything is part of this data variable right here okay so um, what I'm doing is I'm creating a dictionary of this second level right it's a nested dictionary then for my Excel I want two columns one called date and value so let's check that out what I'm talking about and that's because that's how the Bitcoin price is so I just wanted to mirror that date and value. So when I export this to CSV, it's going to have date and value. All right, then we're going to create an empty rows dictionary. And for each entry, so for entries in this dictionary, so this is the second level. So it goes data is the first level. Now we're going a level deeper into the second, which is data. So if we go here, 
if we were to look at this in a JSON, this would actually say data, and this would say data, as it says here. So what we're doing the first time is we're, we're saying we want to access all of this stuff, and then we want for every entry in here, we want to go to the second level of data. Okay? So what we're going to do is epoch equals entries time. So what that is, is we're accessing this right here. Then you're going to take that, uh, you're going to create a variable called date equals time dot, and this is the string format time. I want it month backslash day backslash year. And that's how we get it to look like this inside the file. So, for example, let me just open this Bitcoin one. I want it, the date to look like that. Or I, I guess I could open the doji one. Then we're going to pass it the time dot local time. And then we're going to pass it the epoch, which is up here. So that's how you convert an epoch time. We also want closing prices. So we're, we're still in here, right? We're at, that, we're at this level of the nested dictionary, and I want the close price. Okay, so that's how you get the close price. And then we're going to append the date and closing price into one row. Right, so we're appending it into this blank dictionary. Now, with this file name, so doji.csv, with that open, we're going to write as CSV file. Then we're going to say CSV writer equals CSV.writer. Pass it this right here, which is is referencing this file name and then we're going to write a row that's singular right write row and this is where you put the columns that you want then csv writer dot write rows that's plural then we're going to pass it each row okay so that's what this get doji point get doji prices does then we're going to say the btc symbol equals bitcoin the file BTC file is here in Bitcoin price data plus today dot CSV. So now we're reading it. Now we're going to create a data frame using PD dot read underscore CSV. Pass it this file name. Then we want the date to be a date time. So if it already isn't, we want pandas to make it a date time by doing two underscore date time passing it this data frame that we set up here and we're going to do it by date and then we're going to if it's not already sort the values by date ascending true so that the most recent date will be at the top and pandas does that for us we're going to do the exact same with doji except i forgot to put a date on there we're going to read underscore csv the doji file then we're going to make the date a date time if it already isn't. Then we're going to sort values by ascending. All right, so the start date, now you can write some code to say um, different start dates. So, um, but I know for sure that Doji only goes to May 17, 2018 because I looked at the file and uh, I should have changed this to today. And then what you're going to do is establish the data frames so that the start and end dates don't exceed each other, right? Because Bitcoin was around for a lot longer than Dogecoin. So what this does is it mirrors each other's start and date time. So if I had this as uh, 2010, it would still match the same start dates. Then we're going to create a figure and an axe. And then we're going to make a subplot, just one, right? There's no number here. That we're going to make the figure side 14 across 6 height. Uh, the title is going to be BTC symbol plus doji symbol. And on the first axis, we're going to put the Bitcoin by date. Then the value, we're going to color it red. And we're going to pass it the BTC symbol as the label. And then I want that location in the lower right of the legend. So that's passing this label to this legend. Then we're going to make a second axis, and we're going to plot that on the plot, and it will be the Doji coin, date and value, just like Bitcoin, color blue, 
The symbol that will pass to the legend will be in the upper left, and that's the doji symbol. And then you show the plot. So let me, um, we don't want to do this again, right? We don't want to write that data over. So let's show this one more time. There we go. So this is the first axis, which is Bitcoin. The date is down here. The values are on the axis. Then this axis right here is Dogecoin, upper left. And um, yeah, so that's blue here. All right, so I'm a big fan of that automation. Uh, you can simply go to Yahoo Finance or Crypto Compare and do it yourself. But I like this all automated and um, yeah, so pretty exciting. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Like it if you enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more finance automation or me building my digital assistant. Eventually, I would like Shane to be able to do analysis on all the data I'm collecting and make stock market recommendations. But we're not there yet. And um, leave a comment if you like this video or what you want to see further on my channel. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.